Hey everyone, so it's the beginning of July here. Things are really starting to get going here. Um, we have very cool spring. So it's not until this time of year when things really start growing and doing their things. And what happens in July here is actually almost unbelievable because by August, within one month, things will look completely different. But I did think it was a good time to just pause and take a look back at some of the projects we've done this spring so far so that I can show you the progress on those right now. We've got some, in my opinion, great successes. We've got a few, uh, and we got a couple of very sad stories. Maybe one sad story, but we'll get to that at the end. So let's start here in the vegetable garden with a couple updates here. So we're gonna start here with what I consider to be the biggest success story of the spring so far. These are the bare root David Austin roses fighting temeraire that I planted in spring in these pots in the vegetable garden. And you guys, they are blooming like crazy. So this is how they open. This one's actually a little smaller bloom. Ow, they are pokey. This is how they open with this gorgeous salmon-y yellow sunset color. And then quickly, I would say within a day or two, um, they open up to this really pale um, washed out, but they have this, this beautiful center on them. There are only 10 petals on these roses, but they're sort of roughly, so it makes them look, um, it looks like they have more petals than they really do, um, but they're huge flowers. I mean, you can see when this opens up, the size of this flower is, I mean, four to five inches across, I would say and they've just been blooming their heads off. Now these plants are suffering a little bit from soft fly larvae, like all of the roses in my garden this year, um, but not terrible. And then we have growing up here, we've got the clematis, which I did not show you planting the clematis, um, but we have the clematis planting up here and um, those are really getting going and doing their thing and they're going up. This one is already um, up over the top of the fence. So hopefully we'll have some pergola action uh, soon. As long as we're in the vegetable garden, let's check on the sweet peas. Um, you guys remember that I had to sort of sneak the sweet peas in amongst the tulips. Um, I will say that did give them a little bit of a slow start, but they're going gangbusters now. We're just starting to get our first flowers. This is our very first one, kind of a light pink flower. There's tons of buds on these vines and they're all making their way up the canes as they were asked to do. But I do have sweet peas planted in two other areas in the garden too, and those are looking great as well. Um, they just all really shot up in the last, mm, I would say, two weeks or so. Um, and we did have a ton of rain there for a while, so there was a lot of slug pressure. So there is some slug damage on some of them, but they seem to have overcome that and really gotten going now. So thumbs up on that one. Boy, the sun is just flying in on the circle garden. I think the circle garden is the place in the garden where you can see how much things have grown uh, the easiest. This was probably planted up only a month ago. Um, so it is pretty unbelievable to see how much it's changed. Now, the chive hedge is looking quite sad. It's time for its cutback, but I wanted to show you guys this update before I cut it all back. So that will be happening probably in the next hour or two. I'm gonna go around and I will cut everything back all the way, give it a good drink of water. We'll have fresh new chives in 10 days to two weeks and they will flower again later in the year. So um, the clematis have all have all grown up here. There are, are two to three different clematis growing up here. Now, because they can't grab onto this trellis, um, I just sort of weave them through. They'd probably be much taller if they were actually properly growing up a trellis, but I don't mind this sort of casual look here. So you might notice one big change here, which is that the boxwoods are now in containers. So. This is a story about why garden friendships are so great. Um, first of all, I have been lamenting the fact that I replace these boxwoods basically every year because I have a real problem with our dog, Odin, going to the bathroom on these in winter. In summer, when there's plants around them, it's no problem, but in winter, he can't resist using these as a pee post. So I had devised this sort of elaborate plan this year to build a cage around them and everything. And then I shared a garden on Instagram that had these long hedges of boxwood and then punctuated at the end of each hedge was a boxwood planted in a pot. And I loved the idea. I've seen that hedge with sort of a punctuated um, boxwood at the end, but I loved the idea of the pots. And that's when Brad from Garden Evolution, he's on Instagram as that, and he does have a YouTube channel. That's when he sent me a message. He said, why don't you just put your boxwoods in your circle garden in pots? 
And it's a genius idea. I don't know why I never thought of it. And of course, I love it. I think it looks great. Now, there is the added maintenance. Now I have to water these boxwoods, whereas before I would rarely water these. But really, there's a lot of annuals planted here anyway, so I need to water these things. Anyway, it's not that big of a deal. And now I will move these out of the garden in winter. Um, these pots now, I did pick up these pots, they're beautiful pots, but they are not frost resistant. So if I leave these plants in the garden this year, even though the boxwood are hardy, it's pretty likely that I think the pots would crack. So I will move these pots probably to the garage or a very, very, very protected area um, to hopefully keep them contained. I like the pots a lot and they were extremely affordable. It's just that that's the trade-off is that they're not frost resistant. So anyway, uh, and hopefully these boxwoods will live a long time. These are new again this year. We'll be able to train these into nice balls, but I love them held up a little bit in this garden and it was a great idea and I never would have thought of it. So this is why it's so wonderful to interact with other gardeners um, because you never know when inspiration is going to strike. So I'm going to try to take you around the order in which I planted this. And the first segment here is the one that we plant. Now there's bobo hydrangeas, which obviously stay here all the time. And those are budding up nicely. Um, down here, we've got the black heart sweet potato vines starting to fill in um, with the lemon coral seed around. I did lose a couple of those black hearts um, and I had to replace a couple. Unfortunately, I found them on sale for like a dollar. And then over here we have the... Uh, Nicotiana Langsdorfii, which is really starting to bud up and fill in. So this is going to be really great. Moving over to the next one, we've got the Ladies Mantle, which is a permanent planting here in full flower. Cannot go wrong with that plant. You guys know I love Ladies Mantle. The Thai Basil is just sort of starting to get going here. It's being real pokey. Those are quite small. And the HS Flame Dahlia just starting to flower and is just starting to flower here. Um, the flower on the bottom was open yesterday and this is a new flower today and it will get that yellow center as it opens here. Far and away my favorite section of the garden is this one. Um, the Alnwick roses are in pretty much full flower right now. They are doing just beautifully. And, you know, if you uh, have ever smelled one of these, you know that it, it has almost a strawberry scent to it. And it comes out this sort of um, nice, almost, there's a touch of salmon to the pink, but it quickly fades to almost a, like a, what I would call like a ballet pink. Just a very soft, blushy pink. And then we have this segment here, which is really featuring the Senecio Angel Wings. We've got the lemon licorice plant in there and the white verbena, which is not blooming as well as I would like it to, but I think we got to hit it with a little bit of fertilizer and get some more flowers going there. And the last segment features the cantaloupe mix calendula here, um, starting to open up really gorgeous flowers. It is a mix, so we've got multiple colors going on there. Down here at the bottom, we've got the Jewels of Opar, which if you remember how tiny those were when I planted them, you will be amazed. Um, can you get any better than this color? Allow me to answer that question for you. The answer is no, you can't. So those are looking great. Here we've got my Jawi Morella Dahlia's. The first bloom is about to open. I can barely contain my excitement for that one. Uh, the front border that I plant up alongside the house deserves its own video, so we'll get into this a little bit more as things grow. Um, but I wanted to point out one flower here, and that is this Delphinium Cheer Blue right here. Uh, this is something I planted up in a seed video, kind of an update, and seed video in March. Uh, and Oh my gosh, it's fabulous. Now, it's not particularly floriferous at this point, but that color is like iridescent and so gorgeous. So that was sown mid-March and that's what it's looking like now. In the same spot, I've got two updates for you. One is in the Clematis pruning video, if you remember, we came over by the Guernsey cream that was growing over here and it was gnawed to the ground, presumably by rabbits. Um, as you can see, it's grown up this trellis really well. It has not flowered this year. so. But I'm not giving up because this is a super healthy plant and I suspect it may get flowers 
yet this summer. It just didn't bloom when it normally does. So um, looking good, no flowers yet. We'll kind of hold our breath on that one. Down here, you might remember that um, in one of the videos, I divided one of these hosses. I think this is teacups, I'm not sure. And it was a rather, rather brutal method of division which is basically just whack it in half or maybe more. Um, so I'm gonna show you the ones that were here and I'm gonna show you the one I divided. And I think you'll see that there is very little difference. So here in the front is the original line of them. I divided them and back here, this one is the division. So I would say it's slightly smaller, which you would expect, it was a smaller plant. Looks exactly the same, budding up is going to flower. They've all suffered the same amount of slug damage. So they've got that going for them. This is Johnson's Blue Geranium. It has a very rangy, floppy habit. But how can you argue with this just sea of these beautiful blue flowers? They, um, I think there's three plants max in here. And they just sit up, they lean up against the incredible hydrangea down there. This poppy popped up in front of them, which I quite love. There are dahlias planted amongst those that will come up. A Little bit of ladies mantle popping in here. Um, and this is some nepeta. But um, this is perhaps a good lesson in not getting too fastidious about your garden um, because this is beautiful because it's all wild. Um, even though there's a part of me who wants to desperately get in here and neaten that up. And now we come to the last update. Remember when I repotted this boxwood um, because it had been living in this pot for many, many years and soil had never been changed. And I pulled it out and I found this tiny little root ball that was all wrapped up in circles. Well, this is dead. <laughs> I think it probably was dead when I repotted it, to be honest, or very close to it. Um, but it is definitely crispy, probably getting to be a fire hazard and a risk. Now, it's still in this pot because I'm not going to lie to you guys, a dead boxwood, it's not that easy to tell it's dead until you get up close to it. And I'm just going to wait. The, the budget for this year has been... Um, spent and then some. So I'm going to wait to, I will replace this with another boxwood. This is a green mountain. I love this green mountain. I'm going to wait to see. I don't really want to start from a small one again. So maybe there'll be some sales that I can pick up along the way, or we'll just wait and I'll look for one next year. And until this starts looking truly heinous, I'm just going to leave it here uh, in this pot because it's something. And unless you get really close, you can't tell. Okay, so those are the updates of the things we've worked on so far this year. Now, I didn't show you the Belgian fence because that got its own update, which I will link for you, um, as well as all the containers that I got just did an update um, or a container tour on those. So you can check out those there. And you know we'll follow these things along, but I have to say I'm pretty happy with how things are going so far this year, with the exception of this poor little boxwood.